Today we are looking at Truly Victorian pattern number 106, specifically the drawers. There are six pieces in this pattern, two legs and four pieces of the waistband. We start by cutting out all four pieces. Because I'm short, I'm going to start by shortening the leg piece. Most drawers from the mid-19th century came to just past the knee. Taking out some length will help mine to do that. I'm using a light cotton batiste fabric. The pattern suggests cutting one of the legs face up one face down, but there's no real difference on either side of my fabric, so I didn't bother. Once I have all the pieces cut out, I can start sewing. First, I used a running back stitch to stitch these two sides of the leg. Once they are together, I fell the seam down. Fell the seam? How do you phrase that? Use a felled seam? Felled the seam? Anyway, I trim one side and whip stitch down the other. The pattern then says that I should use bias binding to cover the raw edge on the open part of the leg. Also, the crotch is open on these drawers. It's apparently easier to pee that way when you're wearing hoops. Whether this is true or not remains to be seen. Either way, I decided to use a rolled hem instead because it seemed just as easy. With these first couple of steps done, I have two leg pieces. I did a small rolled hem at the bottom of each leg, and then had some fun adding a little bit of lace and ribbon to decorate the hem. The pink matches the thinner pink ribbon that I've put on my corset. I used a whip stitch to attach the top of the lace, and then whip stitches top and bottom in a matching color to attach the ribbon. With the legs decorated, I got back to construction and began by assembling the waistband. There are four front waistband pieces and two back waistband pieces, which were cut on a fold. I back stitched them together, two front waistband pieces on either end and the one big back piece in the middle. I backstitched them together to form two waistbands and then matched them right sides together and did a running backstitch to the top edge. Now, with my waistband assembled, I started my gathers. I tend to use one strand of buttonhole twist rather than several rows of regular threads. I used pins to identify where the stars on the waistband were and where they would match up on the legs of the drawers. Then, I gathered the top of the leg into two sections, one for the front and one for the back, matching the stars in the middle. The directions mentioned possibly overlapping in the back, and I did do this by about an inch because I wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally expose myself. I understand the practicality of open leg drawers mostly, but I'm a klutz, and accidents happen. Side note, did you know why the can-can was originally considered so pro provocative? Because the ladies wore open legged drawers. That gave the audience a good view of their bits every time they kicked up high. It wasn't just because the Victorians were so repressed that just the view of legs got them going. Anyway, I pinned the right side of the waistband to the right side of the leg and did a back stitch along a fold about one centimeter deep that I had ironed in. I was careful to match the stars, which helped make sure that the gathers were even all along the waist. Then I flipped the waistband around, enclosing the gathers inside. I turned the raw edge of the waistband under and slip stitched the whole thing closed. All that was left at this point was the button and buttonhole. I'm using a bone button from Burnley and Trowbridge and some Guterman buttonhole twist. There are supposed to be four, two buttons on the drawers, but I had bought four from Burnley and Trowbridge and could only find three. Two for the shoulders on my chemise and one here. And they are done. They are beautiful and light and remarkably fast to sew up. I really enjoyed this project and feel very accomplished. The instructions were fairly simple and they all made good sense. And here I am in the completed ensemble. The chemise is a little too big and a little too thick. Depending on how the rest of my 1860s project goes and how much fabric I have, I may make another one, smaller and out of thinner fabric. Stay tuned for my next project, an under petticoat following the directions in books from the time period and no pattern. I'm going off book. This could be interesting.